Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and today we're going to be going over the global exclusive unit Emrys. For all of my unit reviews going forward, I decided to adopt a more organized and formal format for showcasing them. I want to go over just their overall kit, their jobs, and just the premise of their character. Then uh, Gears and Mementos and Enlightenment and then a Training Hall Showcase and then more of a practical like how to use them in context, um, how they might synergize in a party with other like leader skills or other abilities and then yeah that would wrap it up. So I think Emrys is a good place to start since he is a uh, kind of hot new item uh, especially in the global scene. So yeah, let's get started. Let's take a look at Emrys. All right, let's take a moment to see where Emrys is on the uh, Reddit's tier list. He is at the top. I think this is 100% justified. He is very, very, very strong. And uh, we will go into why in a moment here. But one thing I wanted to point out is that as far as magic users at the very top go, it's just him and Dark Mira. So if you don't have her, that just makes him all the more valuable. And then if you do have her, then they can both just be a double whammy. All right, so now let's go into the game's UI and take a look. All right, and here is Emrys at the unit screen. So he has his unique job, which is amazing. Uh, I really don't foresee anyone running anything other than his main job, but he does also have Sage Karnak and Glacial Battle Mage. So they at least, uh, in their mastery bonuses lend themselves well. He's basically just all magic all the time, and that's great. Um, and then uh, for abilities, um, it's almost all his unique kit, except for uh, sorcery pair, just to keep his magic uh, attack up. And as you can see, it's, you know, nothing to slouch at. 1227 is pretty good, considering he also has an M attack charge up. And then there's always the uh, the Letitia buff to think about. So his kit is pretty nice. It's just, you know, damage and debuffs and a charge up. Uh, there's not a whole lot else to say about that other than I think it's really great. Um, yeah, so let's look at his enlightenment next. So I uh, was limited in how many shards I could get, so I went with 1 in 5, but you just as easily could have gone with 1 in 4 if you were maybe shorter on shards. Some people would probably argue that just the raw stats are better. Um, uh, so I went with raw stats there. His gate 2 is a very easy skip because it is a shell charge buff, and it's just not really worth the, the cost, um, you know, because you only have so many passive slots. And you really want to get his, his his unique passive is too good to pass up and nullifies silence and gives him all the stats he wants. And then sorcery pair just to add, add more M attack. Add, adding extra defense on to, and cast time reduction is just it's not really something he needs, or at least not at the cost of just better attacking stats to begin with. And if you do want to lower his cast time, there's always the option of a gear to do that because he happens to be a water Lustberg unit. Um, his leader skill is not bad for M attack users, um, insofar as it's an all attack 20 and M attack 30 and HP 30, and then, you know, jewels obtain 5, that's not going to sway anybody though. Uh, not bad, but I wouldn't, you know, I definitely wouldn't prioritize it first. And then gate 4 is more stats, again, it's uh, debatable whether or not you'd want to pick 4 or 5 first. But I like 5 in that what it does is it, it enhances his Icy Phantasm. Uh, and so let's um, let's take a look at that for just a moment. We'll have a deeper look at his moveset when we go to the training area. But what it does is I believe it increases some of the scaling, but then it also adds a Disable Heal onto it, which is nice for a few reasons. Uh, if you make copious use of Arcana Ratty like I do, having it not heal the enemy is kind of nice. Um, or if you're doing conditional damage for status effects, like how Fury might be used, then um, Disable Heal is nice just because it's um, it's very rare for enemies to be immune to it. Like if an enemy is gonna, if you're going to be able to inflict a status on an enemy, chances are Disable Heal is one of the most likely. 
Um, that's why I like it. Although I could definitely understand if you just wanted the stats because he is he is quite the nuker. Um, and then as far as gears and mementos go, he does have his own memento. It's limited. I, I just didn't want to go for it. Too many gems when we're too close to anniversary and uh, other stuff that's more important to me. So I just popped um, Sophia's memento on there just because more M attack for units from Lustberg. I Pretty simple. Um, any, you know, you could do uh, HP like the Ilu gear if you are kind of lacking in good Lustberg buffs. Um, if you have a lot of the Alma swimsuit, that's another good one for HP. In general, I, I haven't found him to be too squishy yet. Um, so I, I prioritize the attack stats. Of course, if you have his memento, you'll want to use that. And then for gears, one of them, of course, would be his VCR. Um, but if you don't have either of those, then really just HP. M attack, agility, uh, maybe fire exploit. Uh, if you have anything that gives flat bonus to water, um, I used the um, ring frost material from Neo Vita. Um, the silent res is redundant on it, but that's okay because uh, the other stuff is good: fire exploit and just flat water damage, and um, and then you know battlefield drama because that's agility and M attack. And then I think the third slot would honestly just be context. Like maybe you need reader and armor. Maybe you need that minus cast time from the Sophia T Caddy. Uh, it depends, but really, just you can't go wrong with HP, M attack, and agility. Um, it's like the part of a balanced mage diet. All right, so that uh, wraps up our, our look at him on the unit screen. So the next thing we're going to do is take a visit to the training hall. Okay, well, first of all, I forgot to mention the chipmunk, and I feel kind of silly about that. But uh, yeah, modify M attack power. Uh, that's great on him but just like any other magic user so yeah that was silly of me doing a global unit review and forgot a, like the best global gear um all right so yeah we're just going into this training hall now i don't have um emerson's gate 3 so it's just the hp 30 m attack 50 but that's still pretty good all things considered it's right up there with letitia's so yeah, let us go into the hall. I, wait, let me make sure I'm not on auto. That would be really silly. Okay, yeah, that that would have been like he probably just would have gone in and then just like jumped on the tile to exit. Yeah, that would have uh, been been silly. All right, let me just attack him to get rid of that text. Okay, cool. Now we can begin in earnest. So first of all. Notice his attack range. It's great, and I love it. It's also um, like a magic type attack, which can be handy sometimes depending on like barriers, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, great attack range. So first of all, we've got Frost Shard. This is a water res down move and will raise power if the target's inflicted with slow. So before we go any further, that's a really important thing in his kit is uh, conditional damage related to slow. Um, and then he's also got attacks and his uh, reactive will also inflict slow. Um, so if they're susceptible to that, it really increases his damage output. So that's an important thing to note. So let's do it one or let's see what it would be about 5k. That's all right. Um, now let's do Cold Snap, which will inflict slow on him. 100%, good to know. And the nice thing about him is that he has some cast time skills, but some of them are instant casts, and that is just always nice in a mage. I, I kind of feel like he's like a super Automa. Like, I, I wonder if when they were designing him, they kind of used Automa's general kit as a template and then just decided to stack a ton of conditional damage and a charge up on that. We will have to see when um, farther down the line when Atama's job plus plus comes out how you know how he and Emmer stack up together. I'm looking forward to that. Not looking forward to the limited memento part of that though. Bah. All right so now let's check that first move again. It's about 5k before. All right now it's almost 9,000 so that's not bad. And we haven't gotten into the res down yet. So the third attack he's got is a water magic attack and it lowers agility. So that, you know, speaking of Atima, that synergizes fairly well with him or anyone else like um, Dark Atima. 
where they have conditional damage based on agility. Um, so that's good to have, and just in general used to, you know, lower their agility, less turns they get. Um, it's not insanely damaging, but it is a fat AoE, so that's fun. Um, all right, now we're on the, oh yeah, this one is great. This is something that really sets Emrys apart, at least in my opinion, is Frozen Wind. The, it's an attack that lowers magic res for three turns. It also moves them back, but you know, it's, that seems less pressing than the fact that it lowers magic res. But one thing to note about it is that it is the fixed AoE type. So, you know, beware of positioning and all that. But you do it, and then pop. Now his magic res is lowered. Now, it's not stackable, but that's all right. He does have other ways of lowering res, that, and one of which is stackable. And then now our uh, previous, like, just under 9,000 has gone up to 11,000. So um, that is the fun part of this mage. And then now we've gotten down to his kind of big attack. This is the one that the Gate 5 improves, Frozen Phantasm. So this is no charge up. This is just the conditional damage um, plus the res down. I think we also lowered his water res with that first move too. So we got one water res down, one magic res down, and slow, and then this is what the damage output we're getting. So that is fun. And then uh, speaking of res down, he's got that frozen world, which is stackable two times, and it is map wide. So this is a great one. Just even if you're running a water physical team, you can just pop this and then everybody who's water is doing more damage. So that is just wonderful. It's also not terribly expensive. He's got a pretty good um, MP pool. So let's go ahead and smack him with that. And then now let's see how much that first one was doing. All right, went up a little bit. And then Frozen Phantasm has gone up to 27. And so that is his main skill set. And then let's look at his sub. He's got another slow inflicting magic attack. This one is cheap. Uh, not a ton of range, but, you know, doesn't cost much. And then the, the big uh, kind of mover and shaker in his kit is the Triple M attack charge up. Now he's got four casts of it, so that's generous. Um, not quite nine levels, but but up there. And it only costs 20, so as a mage, that's kind of nice. We'll use that in, actually, you know what, let's use it now. Um, and just out of curiosity, we're looking at 4,574 M attack. So now that Icy Phantasm has gone up to 64,000 damage. Uh, and it would, you know, of course, if it's a fire enemy, you know, consider that it would be noticeably more than that. Or I guess 25%, something like that. Either way, that's a lot of damage. Um, and then what else does he have? He's also got um, an attack that raises own attack power for three turns. Do they mean M attack power? Or just his image. I'm not sure what that means actually. Um, so yeah, that's awkward. I assume it's a power up in some form. Um, not amazing damage, but all right. I think you could maybe use that as a more um, in between power up to like take out numerous enemies before you use a charge up on a more powerful enemy. And then finally, we've got uh, Frozen Fantasia, which is another. Um, one that does conditional damage based on slow. Or no, no, sorry, I, I misspoke. Uh, it raises his own agility for three turns if the target's inflicted with slow. So let's showcase that. Oh. As soon as it's done casting. So they are inflicted with slow, so bam, agility boost. And then, of course, I don't have his memento um, or his VCR, so no, like, vision abilities or weapon arts that I can showcase, but... Um, I would assume that they're good, and if you're, um, if you uh, have that stuff, uh, let me know how it works in the comments and how it's treating you. So yeah, that is basically his move set. You can, you can just do tons of debuffing, 
then you can charge up and just really let enemies have it. Like, this guy is going to be amazing in any um, raid bosses where uh, either they're fire elemented or their magic is the most viable way to defeat them. Because you could run him alongside units like Nyx and Dark Automa, anybody who's got just flat magic res or Alia, and they will just, uh, man, they will destroy. Oh, I think one of those wore off. Yeah. That's all right. Um, I am done with this segment. You've kind of, I've showcased all of his moves, and we've seen how absurdly powerful he is just by himself, and that's not taking into account in a team. So um, before I end the video, I'm going to do one little section, which um, are like synergies and units that he might want to run alongside with. Let's go check that out. All right, so let's take a look at some synergies. First up, leader skills. Um, in the water element, um, definitely Letitia's, uh, because you've got the 50M attack and then another 10 all attack, I got gate three, uh, and then cast time by 10. You know, it's all offensive, so, you know, HP needs to not be an issue, but, like, usually for raid bosses, it's not. So this is, like, your go-to if you're just doing a water magic death squad. Um, if CT shenanigans are going to be involved, you may want Automa's Gate 3 leader skill, where you have the CT. Uh, I believe Dark Mira has that too. I, I don't have her, but um, that's an option if necessary, although you'll get a lot less M attack out of it. Um, and then otherwise, just his own leader skill is great too. Um, and then another option in a different element uh, is just because he's a Lustberg unit, the... Um, HP, all attack, and M attack power up. Uh, so that's pretty good too. If um, if you were just say running a Lustberg um, magic team, or uh, I guess you could run physical potentially, but I would mostly imagine Emrys being used in either water teams or magic teams. But some other units he might uh, play well with would be Nyx for his um, magic res down. Or um, Dark Automa for the same reason. And then Alia as well. Um, actually, I don't really need to showcase the, the units for that part. but um, So yeah, just anyone who can lower magic res or lower water res. So that might include Julia or Tethys or Itsuki uh, on the water side. And then the ones I mentioned earlier for magic. And then another friend he might be able to make, uh, depending on the success rate of this skill is Klima because she her rain snail um, can also inflict slow although he has no trouble inflicting it himself but you might be able to get some extra benefit out of that um, but yeah so that I think that does it for this uh, review of Emrys I am really happy with him overall as a unit even if he is like partially enlightened with no memento so if you found yourself pulling him maybe by accident or you got him but didn't didn't complete the setup don't worry he's set <laughs> so all right um next review i'm gonna do is siegfried because i got a comment about that and i love siegfried as a unit so look forward to that and then of course the weekly update on thursday and or friday and i will see you guys next time